So the Cure Parkinson's Trust, we feel we're a unique patient-led organisation that focuses on the cutting-edge science and medicine required to generate a fundamental new treatment for Parkinson's. Tom, a couple of weeks ago, said you must keep to 10 minutes. Uh, and I, he said, I know that all, everyone else is, all the other speakers have got 20 minutes, but you've only got 10. I said, why is that, Tom? He said, well, you're undoubtedly the most boring speaker of everyone here. <laughs> so uh, you could be the judge of that, but let's just say that he wasn't struggling for communication that day. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, You've heard from Roger about uh, Transgeo, which we've uh, helped uh, fund, but we also helped fund the GDNF study, which is happening in Bristol, and it should finish uh, within about a year. And this is where we're infusing a growth factor directly into patients' brains, four catheters ported to the neck, and we pulse them with this brain growth factor for for 18 months. So the whole world of Parkinson's has been waiting for this trial for, for, a, for a decade, really. It's been very difficult to, uh, to move forward. But anyway, it's going on now. And um, we, we look forward to the results of that in about a year's time. But I really want to talk about our drug development program. We, we, we do find a lot of preclinical research, but um, we, we very much feel that, that treatments ultimately will be tested in patients to, to know that they, they work. And the ultimate test is, is in patients. So we t ch tend to sort of push our patient trial, clinical trial program uh, forward as fast as we can. So over the past four to five years, from several hundred drug candidates we've, we've considered, 106 of these drugs have been presented to our international committee for judging which of those goes into clinical trials. We've got this infrastructure of a group of um, now 15 experts. Roger was talking about, the, about his own A-team. I think this is an A-team of experts in, um, in, in Parkinson's. Roger's there right in the middle. And basically what we do every year, 250, 300 pages, detailed information on about 25 to 30 drugs that we want the uh, committee to consider. It's a unique on, uh, ongoing initiative. I think, it's, I think it's larger than any other therapeutic area for what, what we're doing. And this is one of the years where various drugs were, um, were, were selected in the middle. We got Simvastatin, that's, that, that trial's now going ahead. Uh, Bajurin's going ahead, uh, almost finished actually, uh, Luaglutide. Um, nilotinib's in there, that's uh, probably going to go ahead fairly soon. Uh, so it's a program where many innovative drug targets for Parkinson's have emerged from, from this program. This is about a quarter of the targets that we're, um, we're exploring in this program. So specifically, what drugs have we been, been looking at? So at the top, the six uh, trials currently underway that have been prioritized through that committee. These trials, uh, I, I guess, would never have happened if, if we hadn't have put that together. And, and at the bottom, we've got a few that are in preparation. In fact, there's more than this in preparation. But uh, let's just go through one, one or two of these. So Bajuran and Luraglutide are GLP-1 uh, agonists. And this started because we funded uh, a, a study looking at exenotide. Exenotide is Bajuran. It's just a twice a day formulation rather than a once a week formulation, but it's the same drug. We published this in the Journal of Clinical Investigation with a wonderful editorial with it. Results seem to be so good that we, we funded a neurologist to stay with the patients for another 12 months. And uh, it seemed like uh, motor and cognition were improved. So the, the name of the game in, in medicine is replication. So we, we, we managed to, to um, get Michael J. Fox to, to fund a much bigger trial on Bigerian. So that's replicating what we've already shown um, in a much more robust way. And the last patient out of that study is, I think, this month. So probably within about six months, we'll hear the results of that. Luaglutide is um, underway in, at Cedars-Sinai in Los Angeles. And that is a similar drug to Bidurin, but we're studying it in uh, another group of patients, Parkinson's patients who are insulin resistant. Epi589 is a 
is a, a drug I hijacked out of pediatrics. It's a mitochondrial drug, so it affects, it improves energy in, in, uh, in cells. This trial started in, at Harvard last month um, and is coming to London very soon and Tubingen and also Los Angeles. And it's looking at patients with idiopathic Parkinson's and a number of mitochondrial genetic forms of the disease. Deferoprone uh, was another one that, um, that the Link Clinical Trial Committee uh, um, prioritized. This is uh, being done in France, 338 patients, um, <coughs> 20 centers across France. They're all repurposed drugs. And Cure Parkinson's Trust is part of the deferoprone trial and Broxol, uh, has started, that's um, been done here in London. It's a res originally a respiratory drug. Trials in preparation, lixacenatide, we're, we're just uh, finalizing the funding for that. So that will happen also in France with in patients um, who, the minute they're diagnosed, they, they will, will get lixacenatide. The Bijurin and Loaglutide trial have been, have been done on later stage Parkinson's patients. And cysteine, um, UDCA, MSDC-160, and the uh, C-ABLE drugs, nilotinib and bosutinib. Have, all of these drugs have been prioritized by the, um, by the committee, and it's now our job. We're mandated to take them to trial. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get them funded or get the drug companies to provide drug and placebo. So all of these ones at the bottom, uh, we're, we're, we're pursuing. N nilotinib was the uh, drug that was got some uh, extraordinary results in Washington uh, last, um, last October. And uh, our committee had, uh, had not quite prioritized it. We were concerned about safety. But the uh, Georgetown study, which only used about one-eighth of the dose, that's, it's, it's actually a cancer drug, they use one eighth of the dose, and the patients seem to be very well on that. So that's um, given us a green light to move forward on that. One of our programs that's done exceptionally well is um, uh, laboratory studies that we do drug screens to find drugs which we can put into that clinical program. So we funded a study to generate Parkin agonists, and uh, that's what these uh, diagrams are. Um, referring to. We've got a fascinating drug that's come out of our Paris inhibitor uh, study, we, we, which involves screening 100,000 drugs for one that would be, in fact we've come up with seven, that uh, inhibit a, a, a process that we think is extremely important in Parkinson's. And um, that paper's almost published and some really interesting results and I expect the, the drug the lead drug that's come out from that will be into trial, hopefully within um, within a calendar year. It's going to go up before the committee uh, fairly soon. We're also funding a study with uh, looking at drugs which affect mitochondrial pore modulators, and uh, that's come up with quite a few drugs. So this feeds our clinical trial program with things that we think are specifically and compellingly important for, for Parkinson's. Because disease-modifying drugs have, not, have never been out there, and we're, that's all we're testing, drugs that stop people getting any worse, maybe start to, to get people a little better. So um, we realized that drug combinations, we've got, we're looking at 60 or so different biological targets across our, our drugs. So we, it hasn't escaped us that, that looking at drug combinations might well be very important. So we're starting to move towards that. So what do we need? We need symptomatic medications that work better. We need disease-modifying medications that work. So we're now developing relevant drug combinations simultaneously to, to tackle complementary neuroprotective biochemical pathways involved in, in Parkinson's. What we don't want to be doing is when we're using more than one therapy for the therapies to interact with each other. We're looking at several combinations of two biochemical co complementary disease modifying drugs targeting different biochemical pathways which will be a c compellingly better than, a, than an individual monotherapy. We're also looking at various combinations of symptomatic and disease modifying drug and that's what we want for our patients either regenerative medicine or pharmaceutical medicine 
medicine at least holds people where they are and we also think that, that there's a possibility that we can make things a lot better. And we think Parkinson's patients deserve that and that's our aim.